Dios vs. Secretary of Finance, GR. Number 193007, July 19, 2011. Fax, Petitioners Dias and Temple filed petition for declaratory relief assailing the validity of the impending imposition of value-added tax, VAT, by the BIR on the collections of tollway operators. Petitioners hold the view that Congress did not, when it enacted the NIRC, intend to include toll fees within the meaning of sale of services that are subject to VAT that a toll fee is a user's tax not a sale of services that to impose VAT on toll fees would amount to a tax on public service and that, since VAT was never factored into the formula for computing toll fees, its imposition would violate the non-impairment clause of the Constitution. The government avers that the NIRC imposes VAT on all kinds of services of franchise grantees, including tollway operations except where the law provides otherwise that the court should seek the meaning and intent of the law from the words used in the statute and that the imposition of VAT on tollway operations has been the subject as early as 2003 of several BIR rulings and circulars. The government also argues that petitioners have no right to invoke the non-impairment of contracts clause since they clearly have no personal interest in existing toll operating agreements, tell us between the government and tollway operators. At any rate, the non-impairment clause cannot limit the state's sovereign taxing power which is generally read into contracts. Finally, the government contends that the non-inclusion of VAT in the parametric formula for computing toll rates cannot exempt tollway operators from VAT. In any event, it cannot be claimed that the rights of tollway operators to a reasonable rate of return will be impaired by the VAT since this is imposed on top of the toll rate. Further, the imposition of VAT on toll fees would have very minimal effect on motorists using the tollways. Petitioners point out that tollway operators cannot be regarded as franchise grantees under the NIRC since they do not hold legislative franchises. Further, the BIR intends to collect the VAT by rounding off the toll rate and putting any excess collection in an escrow account. But this would be illegal since only the Congress can modify VAT rates and authorize its disbursement. Finally, BIR Revenue Memorandum Circular 63-2010, BIRMC 63-2010, which directs toll companies to record an accumulated input VAT of zero balance in their books as of August 16, 2010, contravenes Section 111 of the NIRC which grants entities that first become liable to VAT a transitional input tax credit of 2% on beginning inventory. For this reason, the VAT on toll fees cannot be implemented. Issue whether or not the government is unlawfully expanding VAT coverage by including tollway operators and tollway operations in the terms franchise grantees and sale of services under Section 108 of the Code. Held, VAT is levied, assessed, and collected, according to Section 108, on the gross receipts derived from the sale or exchange of services as well as from the use or lease of properties. The third paragraph of Section 108 defines sale or exchange of services as follows, the phrase a sale or exchange of services means the performance of all kinds of services in the Philippines for others for a fee, remuneration or consideration, including those performed or rendered by construction and service contractors stock, real estate, commercial, customs and immigration brokers lessors of property whether personal or real warehousing services lessors or distributors of cinematographic films persons engaged in milling, processing, manufacturing or repacking goods for others proprietors, operators or keepers of hotels, motels, rest houses, pension houses, inns, resorts proprietors or operators of restaurants, refreshment parlors, cafes and other eating places including clubs and caterers dealers in securities lending investors transportation contractors on their transport of goods or cargoes, including persons who transport goods or cargoes for hire and other domestic common carriers by land relative to their transport of goods or cargoes common carriers by air and sea relative to their transport of passengers, goods or cargoes from one place in the Philippines to another place in the Philippines sales of electricity by generation companies transmission, and distribution companies services of franchise grantees of electric utilities, telephone and telegraph, 
radio and television broadcasting and all other franchise grantees except those under Section 119 of this code and non-life insurance companies, except their crop insurances, including surety, fidelity, indemnity and bonding companies and similar services regardless of whether or not the performance thereof calls for the exercise or use of the physical or mental faculties. It is plain from the above that the law imposes VAT on all kinds of services rendered in the Philippines for a fee, including those specified in the list. The enumeration of affected services is not exclusive. By qualifying services with the words all kinds, Congress has given the term services an all-encompassing meaning. The listing of specific services are intended to illustrate how pervasive and broad is the VAT's reach rather than establish concrete limits to its application. Thus, every activity that can be imagined as a form of service rendered for a fee should be deemed included unless some provision of law especially excludes it. When a tollway operator takes a toll fee from a motorist, the fee is in effect for the latter's use of the tollway facilities over which the operator enjoys private proprietary rights that its contract and the law recognize. It does not help petitioners cause that Section 108 subjects to VAT all kinds of services rendered for a fee regardless of whether or not the performance thereof calls for the exercise or use of the physical or mental faculties. This means that services to be subject to VAT need not fall under the traditional concept of services, the personal or professional kinds that require the use of human knowledge and skills. And not only do tollway operators come under the broad term all kinds of services, they also come under the specific class described in Section 108 as all other franchise grantees who are subject to VAT except those under Section 119 of this code. Tollway operators are franchise grantees and they do not belong to exceptions, the low-income radio and or television broadcasting companies with gross annual incomes of less than A plus minus 10 million and gas and water utilities, that section 119 spares from the payment of VAT. The word franchise broadly covers government grants of a special right to do an act or series of acts of public concern. Petitioners of course contend that tollway operators cannot be considered franchise grantees under Section 108 since they do not hold legislative franchises. But nothing in Section 108 indicates that the franchise grantees it speaks of are those who hold legislative franchises. Petitioners give no reason, and the court cannot surmise any for making a distinction between franchises granted by Congress and franchises granted by some other government agency. The latter, properly constituted, may grant franchises. Indeed, franchises conferred or granted by local authorities, as agents of the state, constitute as much a legislative franchise as though the grant had been made by Congress itself. The term franchise has been broadly construed as referring, not only to authorizations that Congress directly issues in the form of a special law but also to those granted by administrative agencies to which the power to grant franchises has been delegated by Congress. Tollway operators are, owing to the nature and object of their business, franchise grantees. The construction, operation, and maintenance of toll facilities on public improvements are activities of public consequence that necessarily require a special grant of authority from the state. Indeed. Congress granted special franchise for the operation of tollways to the Philippine National Construction Company, the former tollway concessionaire for the North and South Luz on expressways. Apart from Congress, tollway franchises may also be granted by the TRB, pursuant to the exercise of its delegated powers under PD 1112. The franchise in this case is evidenced by a toll operation certificate. Petitioners contend that the public nature of the services rendered by tollway operators excludes such services from the term sale of services under Section 108 of the Code. But, again, nothing in Section 108 supports this contention. The reverse is true. In specifically including by way of example electric utilities, telephone, telegraph, and broadcasting companies in its list of VAT covered businesses. Section 108 opens other companies rendering public service for a fee to the imposition of VAT. 
businesses of a public nature such as public utilities and the collection of tolls or charges for its use or services of franchise. The operation by the government of a tollway does not change the character of the road as one for public use. Someone must pay for the maintenance of the road, either the public indirectly through the taxes they pay the government, or only those among the public who actually use the road through the toll fees they pay upon using the road. The tollway system is even a more efficient and equitable manner of taxing the public for the maintenance of public roads. The charging of fees to the public does not determine the character of the property whether it is for public dominion or not. Article 420 of the Civil Code defines property of public dominion as one intended for public use. Even if the government collects toll fees, the road is still intended for public use if anyone can use the road under the same terms and conditions as the rest of the public. The charging of fees, the limitation on the kind of vehicles that can use the road, the speed restrictions and other conditions for the use of the road did not affect the public character of the road. Tollway fees are not taxes. Indeed, they are not assessed and collected by the BIR and do not go to the general coffers of the government. In sum, fees paid by the public to tollway operators for use of the tollways, are not taxes in any sense. A tax is imposed under the taxing power of the government principally for the purpose of raising revenues to fund public expenditures. Toll fees, on the other hand, are collected by private tollway operators as reimbursement for the costs and expenses incurred in the construction, maintenance and operation of the tollways, as well as to assure them a reasonable margin of income. Although toll fees are charged for the use of public facilities, therefore, they are not government exactions that can be properly treated as a tax. Taxes may be imposed only by the government under its sovereign authority, toll fees may be demanded by either the government or private individuals or entities, as an attribute of ownership. Parenthetically, VAT on tollway operations cannot be deemed a tax on tax due to the nature of VAT as an indirect tax. In indirect taxation, a distinction is made between the liability for the tax and burden of the tax. The seller who is liable for the VAT may shift or pass on the amount of VAT it paid on goods, properties or services to the buyer. In such a case, what is transferred is not the seller's liability but merely the burden of the VAT. Thus, the seller remains directly and legally liable for payment of the VAT but the buyer bears its burden since the amount of VAT paid by the former is added to the selling price. Once shifted, the VAT ceases to be a tax and simply becomes part of the cost that the buyer must pay in order to purchase the good, property or service. Consequently, VAT on tollway operations is not really a tax on the tollway user, but on the tollway operator. Under Section 105 of the Code, VAT is imposed on any person who in the course of trade or business, sells or renders services for a fee. In other words, the seller of services, who in this case is the tollway operator, is the person liable for VAT. The latter merely shifts the burden of VAT to the tollway user as part of the toll fees. For this reason, VAT on tollway operations cannot be a tax on tax even if toll fees were deemed as a user's tax. VAT is assessed against the tollway operator's gross receipts and not necessarily on the toll fees. Although the tollway operator may shift the VAT burden to the tollway user, it will not make the latter directly liable for the VAT. The shifted VAT burden simply becomes part of the toll fees that one has to pay in order to use the tollways.